today is a good day. And I say that because I now have a book on sale on Amazon. And we're not talking ebooks, we're talking paperback. That's right. Now, this is obviously not the official copy. It says not for resale across the top, but you can get your own copy of my book full of a handful of poems that I wrote when I was a teenager. Things that have never been on the channel, things that have never even been on the internet. These from these are stories and well not stories, but poems from back in like 2009, 2010, before I even thought about starting a YouTube channel. So, if you are interested in helping the channel out and getting something for yourself, follow the link in the top of the description. There will be UK and US links and Canadian links down there, so you can order yourself a copy of Funhouse and other dark poems written by yours truly. This is a real book. It's a real thing. It has pages. You can get a little sneak peek. Whoa, what was that? I haven't got a picture of myself on the back. This is about as official as it gets, and I cannot thank you all enough for the continued support. Without you all, I wouldn't be here. So, thank you so, so much. I cannot wait for you guys to get one of these books. Thank you again for everything, and let's get into the video. Taylor Swift has become one of the most recognizable faces in all of pop music. She rivals the likes of Katy Perry and even Bruno Mars. While some believe her success came from hard work and dedication, many believe that there is something working with her behind the scenes. Of course, it is believed to be the work of the Illuminati. There are many reasons people believe this. Firstly, you have the main thing everyone points out about pop stars, the imagery. In many headshots of Taylor, you can see that one eye is covered. This, of course, represents the all-seeing eye atop the pyramid. To further this belief, people are pointing to the 2009 MTV Awards incident between Taylor and Kanye. As Taylor is getting her reward, she is wearing a white dress. The color white represents purity. However, later in the show, when Beyonce calls Taylor out to finish her speech, they're both wearing red dresses. In this theory, it is believed that one of the trials to being accepted into the Illuminati is public embarrassment. The fact that she came out with a red dress, a color that represents being in the hierarchy of the Illuminati, indicates that at this point, she was accepted. This isn't the only conspiracy following Taylor, however. There are a few more I would like to cover that may be more insane than the first. A handful of theorists on the web believe that Taylor is a clone of someone who was once a priestess in the Church of Satan. Zena Shrek served as High Priestess in the Church of Satan from 1985 to 1990 before leaving and cutting ties with all of it. However, when photos of her recently began to surface again, everyone was talking about how much she resembled Taylor Swift. This, of course, sparked many conspiracies. It is believed that before Xena left the church, she cloned herself, and this clone went on to live a glamorous life as a pop star known as Taylor Swift. I won't say whether or not I believe any of these, or if I believe they hold any merit whatsoever. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. With that said, the evidence is quite interesting. Known as one of the greatest martial artists of all time, Bruce Lee passed away at the young age of 32. Two months before his death, he'd been treated with swelling in the brain after collapsing on the floor and seizing while dubbing over a soundtrack. The doctors quickly treated the condition with medication, and Lee was back in peak physical condition just as he was before. After those two months, however, Lee would pass away from a supposed allergic reaction to headache medication. After all, the official ruling was confirmed by a forensic scientist working for the London police at Scotland Yard. Even so, people doubted this to be the truth. 
The doubt began arising when Lee's personal physician claimed that Bruce had taken the same drug before and had no issue with it. So what really happened if he didn't have an allergic reaction? Here are some of the theories. Some believe that Bruce was deceased long before it was announced to the public. In fact, some believe he was murdered by the Chinese triads after refusing to pay them protection money. If you're unsure who the Chinese triads are, here's a quick history. The triads are a family-run organization that operates mainly out of China. They also operate out of Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, the Chinatown in the US, Canada, Australia, and more. Also referred to as the Chinese Mafia, they are not a group you want to have bad blood with. Could it be that Bruce Lee somehow got involved with the wrong group of people? Keeping with the theme of someone taking a hit out on him, supposedly the accepted theory in Hong Kong media was that Bruce Lee was murdered by the Italian Mafia. The reasoning behind the assassination is suspected to be that Bruce refused to go through with their plans for his career. Of course, when you disagree with the Mafia, you're taken care of. Of course, this is all speculation and Bruce Lee could have very well passed away from the swelling in his brain or an allergic reaction. Some journalists and theorists have suggested exhuming the body and testing for any types of poison or to see if something was covered up in the autopsy report. However, it may just be better to allow this theory to be forgotten and for Bruce Lee to be remembered. Isn't it strange how there are so many examples of cartoons and television shows predicting future events? Of course, the most well-known example would be The Simpsons. They've been credited in predicting many events, some being especially tragic. In 2003, the Las Vegas entertainer Siegfried and Roy show came to an end when Roy was attacked by one of the tigers used in the show. The tiger ripped open an artery that carries oxygen to the performer's brain as well as crushed his windpipe. All this happened in front of the audience. Ten years before this event, there was a bit on The Simpsons where something similar took place. A round of applause, please, for Anastasia. She loves show business so much nicer than the savagery of the jungle, yeah? Another example is when The Simpsons predicted FaceTime. Back in 1995, where most phones looked like this, The Simpsons aired a future-themed episode in which Lisa speaks to Marge through video chat. Nowadays, we're used to this, and even facial ID. But why are we so quickly to accept changes in technology? This is where predictive programming comes into play. Many theorists believe that we're shown things in a fictional medium that will eventually become reality. By the time it becomes a reality, we've been subconsciously accepting it so we see it as a natural progression. In reality, or at least as some believe, it's a tool used to ready us for the point where robots and humans live amongst each other. Many believe this tactic is used in a similar fashion with tragic events. Of course, there is The Simpsons supposedly predicting the date that the Twin Towers would fall via a magazine ad for a trip to New York. The large nine on the front would represent the month, and the towers in the back would represent the day, spelling out 9-11. These supposed predictive programming examples go farther back than the mid-90s, however. In 1989, a Batman comic book included a few panels of Two-Face devising a plan to destroy the Twin Towers. In another comic, Wonder Woman even crashes her jet into the towers. There are many other instances of predictive programming that don't have to do with tragedies, like we spoke of before, however, I'm not saying it's really happening. As I say at the end of all these, I'm in no way claiming they are real. I implore you to come to your own conclusions. Dan Schneider is one of the masterminds behind just about every show aired on Nickelodeon. His reach stems all the way from the early days with The Amanda Show up until Sam and Katz as well as Victorious. Now, being in such a position of power, it should come as no surprise that he could very well be abusing it. 
all over the internet, it is believed that not only is Dan a foot fetishist, that's all but proven, but that he also may be abusing the teen stars of Nickelodeon. Let's begin with the foot fetishist claims. If you've sat down and watched any number of live action show on Nick, you may have noticed that there are many instances where the stars will use their feet in strange and sometimes disturbing ways. Here are just a few examples. Ariana Grande's character sucking on her own toes, Victoria Justice's character pulling a bow with her feet, and the countless headshots or modeling photos where these stars have no shoes or socks on. People believe Dan had a role in all of these photos and clips. While most would argue that it's simply for comedic effect or to show how silly the characters are, but there is one other thing relating to feet that is really disturbing. In 2009, Dan tweeted from his personal Twitter account this tweet. Pick, Carly tickles Sam's very unusual toes. If you have a moment, will you please name Sam's toes for us? with pictures of actresses Miranda Cosgrove and Jeanette McCurdy. He did something similar from the Sam and Cat Twitter account saying, Sam and Cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot, take a pic and use hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. We'll retweet and follow until our fingers get sore. Obviously, this is extremely strange and tons of children responded. Now we're going to be moving away from the foot fetishist claims and into even darker territory. I have to give a trigger warning here. Some of the content that we're about to talk about can be very triggering for those who know someone who has went through sexual abuse or has went through it themselves. If you feel as if you can't handle it, go to the timestamp on screen now to skip to the final entry. Many photos have come out of Dan standing with the stars of their respective show. It could be Miranda Cosgrove, Victoria Justice, or any other number of actress. This isn't strange, seeing as he is the creator of a majority of these shows. However, some of the things that went on behind the scenes are disturbing. A YouTube channel uploaded some behind-the-scenes footage from The Amanda Show. Dan is filming it most of the time, and he seems to zoom in on Amanda for a majority of it. Later, they're filming a scene where they're both in a jacuzzi together. This was actually put into an episode. I remember watching it when I was a kid. Another behind-the-scene clip I found was really eerie. It's from the show Victorious, and was posted on Dan Schneider's official YouTube channel. Victoria is getting sent to film a scene. What she doesn't know is that Dan is on the floor near the couch. When she falls back onto the couch, he reaches up and scares her. Where does he reach? towards her feet. Blammed you. That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little message at the end of the video that says, I made this myself, that just adds to the creepy and strangeness of it. Finally, on April 9th, an article was posted by DBK News stating that Nickelodeon was cutting ties with Dan. While none of the allegations against him were brought up, many believe that this is the main reason. Nickelodeon's official statement was, Both sides agreed that this is a natural time to move on. Many of the shows Dan worked on were coming to an end. Was it all just perfect timing? Or did they reach some sort of agreement? I'm not claiming anything either way. I'll leave the question to you. I have to warn you, while this one isn't graphic, it can be incredibly triggering to some. I'm in no way saying the information in this video is factual. I'm simply attempting to make an entertaining video. It was back in 2012 when the term crisis actor was coined for the first time. Its earliest use was from a 2012 blog post from a former professor and conspiracy theorist James Tracy implying that the government could have hired actors to appear at the scene of the Sandy Hook massacre and speak to reporters. He said the actors could have been trained in criminal and victim behavior and bring intense realism to simulated mass casualty events in public places. Of course, this follows through with the belief that the government set up the shooting where it was all staged and no one was actually killed. 
He believes there were also actors placed at the scene of the Boston Marathon bombing. These theorists claim that the events I just spoke of are false flag operations. In other words, they are staged events with actors, special effects makeup, and more so they can push a certain agenda. This could be to raise the supposed need for war, gun control, mental health screenings, and much more. The most recent and prevalent crisis actor theory, at least of writing this script, is that of David Hogg, one of the survivors of the Parkland school shooting. I must say one last time that I do not believe the theories in this video. They are simply that. Theories. In conclusion, it is important to remember that while some of these theories, like the ones about Taylor Swift, are silly and funny, there are some people out there who believe them. Be respectful in the comments section even if the theories themselves are disrespectful. I'm not defending or siding with anyone. Just remember that we have freedom of belief and speech in America. With that said, I'll say one last time that I do not stand behind any of these theories. I cannot stress that enough. Except for the Taylor Swift one. She is totally and 100% part of the Illuminati. Or Lizard. Hello there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and go down there and comment below what you liked about it. If this is your first time here and you enjoyed the video, then be sure to subscribe with the notifications on so you get notified of all my new uploads, which will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I also put out a weekend video every here and there. In just a few moments, there will be some links on screen so you can go watch another one of my videos, or you can go to the channel and pick out one yourself. There will also be a link to my Patreon page. There you can pledge a dollar a month and get thumbnail previews and some blooper reels and you get to see what's coming up next. It's a great way to support the channel and you get something out of it. But until then guys, stay strange, stay safe, and good night.